So the big question is this, how are real estate investors who don't have a ton of free time, don't have access to off-market deals, and didn't start life on third base, how do we grow a real estate business conservatively to support our families, finally leave the corporate rat race and build a legacy? That is the question, and this podcast will give you the answers. I'm Ed Matthews, and this is Real Estate Underground. This is the Real Estate Underground podcast show, lucky number 13. Hey, everybody, Ed Matthews here with the Real Estate Underground. I am joined by Tom and Kevin Williams. Gentlemen, thank you very much for uh, making time today. It's good thank to see you both. Thanks for having us. Yeah, Same here. Glad to be here. Absolutely. We've known each other for a bit of time now, but I, for the folks that haven't met you, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourselves and what you folks do for a living? Okay, I'll start first. I'm basically a corporate attorney, a CPA, and a lawyer by background, and I worked for the government, and I worked for most of my life. I had attorney for big companies like Stanley Black & Decker, Ingersoll Rand, RBC Bearings both doing international tax and M&A work. Okay. And some are retired now. You can only do it for so long. It's a high pressure. Understood. You know, high pressure situation. So. I spent 25 years in corporate America and I don't miss yeah. it. Right? I, I don't miss it either. But I, <laughs> now I work part-time and mentor people, which is Excellent. I like. Yeah. yeah. How about you, Kevin? My background is I run a Google ads management company. I've been doing that since 2011 have been solely focused on paid ad advertising mm -hmm. since 2006 and yet still run that business today. And it's grueling and it's rewarding as well. You know, servicing high touch clients with a high touch service is I don't know why we get into a business like that, but that's where I am. And, it's, and yet uh, here we are, right? Here we are. Yeah. Yeah. In order to understand exactly what he's talking about or even to be able to talk to him, uh, about two years ago, I signed up for, and I took the program at, at Duke Internet Marketing and yeah. uh, went through that program. So I could at least, <laughs> you at least understand thing. what he's talking about because yeah. it's, it's a different world. So. so Kevin, like you, I spent a bunch of time in technology and, and I remember sitting at the table and my oldest was, Katie was asking, dad, what exactly do you do for a living? And Maggie, my little one, who rolled her eyes and said, Oh, don't ask that. Nobody knows what he does for a living. <laughs> yeah. All my friends, same thing. Yeah, right. even my wife, she has no clue. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. The the road answer is always in technology. And now it's always in real estate. Yeah. Right. So let's talk about the real estate. So obviously varied backgrounds and you guys have been working together for several years now. Tell us about your business and what you guys do with your operation. I think I got started because in corporate America, I was looking to get out of the pressure cooker. Mm -hmm. I have a number of investment newsletters that I read. And one day, I think it was the Stansbury letter. Oh, yeah. They had an article on investing in tax liens and get 18 to 20% annual return. Right. And they recommended uh, a couple of sources of expertise that you could follow up with. Mm -hmm. And I decided to reach out with the U.S. Tax Lien Association and dragged Kevin in with me because he was looking to diversify. We actually went through their training. We signed up for their mentorship, got their you know, high level mentorship. Yep. And we started with tax deed auctions. Okay. Showing up, I mean, it's a blast. You show up at town halls and watch people fight with each other. And oh, yeah. it's kind of cool, but we were- like Watching Jerry Springer very, live. Yeah, we've been very successful with being able to get properties at low prices, sight unseen. So, you know, there's risk associated with that. Sure. But we've also been able to deal with Connecticut and Florida. We deal with Florida and Connecticut. Mm -hmm. And Connecticut, believe it or not, is very complicated in terms of trying to hunt through the legal morass that's associated with it. You know, people telling us, well, you can't get insurance. There's redemption periods. You can't get title insurance. Mm -hmm. So we've been able to say, no, it can't be that way. And we just were tenacious and we've been able to solve those problems. And by solving those problems, there's plenty of opportunity. So how many over just ballpark, how many liens have you bought over the years? Oh, I think it's probably about 15 so far. Wow. Yeah. And then how many of those liens turned into actual properties that you ended up with? 
We currently have about eight properties, eight single families. Uh, one's a duplex. And just to clarify, they're deeds. So Connecticut's a tax deed state. So they, you actually buy the deed at auction. I'm not familiar with them. So tell me more about that. Okay. Yeah, what happens is the state, and in just about every state, they have the right to take your property away. It's a super priority lien. If they don't get paid their taxes, they're going to put your property up for auction. And basically, every other lien holder gets stiffed by statute. Right. So you buy property free and clear of all liens, except for any kind of municipal liens like water liens or sewer liens, which you have to pay off. But it's a bidding process where they conduct an auction yep. and then actually sell the property. So you show up and you bid for the property. And in Connecticut, there's a redemption period. So for six months, the original property owner can pay back the taxes plus interest at 18% per year on the bid amount to get the property back. And so that 18% goes to you as the lien holder? Yes. yes. Yeah. Wow. So we've had several properties that we bought and then held for the five or six months period. And then at the last minute, people yeah. decided they wanted to get redeemed mm -hmm. and got a nice big fat interest check. Which and then others, we ended up with owning the property. Wow. No kidding. Yeah. And so the properties you said are mostly in Connecticut or are they kind of spread between Connecticut and Florida? I would say more in Connecticut. We've had a couple in Florida and that was going great until real estate prices started to accelerate. And yeah. Florida is online, so it's very competitive. And now it's insane. People have bidden up prices like it's, it's ridiculous. But it's people that goes in cycles. Turn. That'll, right. that'll go up and down. And, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, just have to be patient. Yep. Take what the market gives you, as we were saying before we got on here, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Okay. And so you've got your properties here in Connecticut and the couple down in Florida. What else are you focused on these days? Well, once we finished acquiring a bunch of these, we became aware of Citeria and, and all the gurus are telling you, well, join your local real estate investment association, which we did. And we became aware of the coaching program. And the focus on the coaching program was to diversify in, into multifamilies. Yeah. We didn't have a clue as to how to do that. Mm -hmm. So we signed up for it and took the program. And that's what started the process. And since then, we've actually added multifamilies and we continue to market. Tell us about the multifamilies that you've bought. Are they commercial properties? Are they residential properties? It's actually a mobile home park. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's a mobile home park. It's in Wichita, Kansas. And we bought it at a 15 okay. cap and it's 50% occupied. We're also connected with Marco Kozlowski and he calls that a unicorn. He's, yes. So you don't find that very often with a 15 cap that with upside. So I think with upside, it, we could get it up to about a 22, 22 cap, we think, somewhere uh -huh. around there. And we just closed last or this past December. It's zoned for 18 spots, nine are occupied, three are tenant owned. I think we have three homes we own. Right. And, and yeah, we have to work with zoning to figure out what the final layout is going to look like because we spoke with them. Some of the lots are a little smaller than we think, but we think we'll end up with around 15 or 16 lots. Okay. And so how does the mobile park business work as opposed to say more traditional multifamily where you're buying an apartment building? I would say the mobile home park business is the real last affordable housing choice. More and more people are being driven to mobile homes because it's affordable housing. Yeah. There's some things you have to watch. If they don't have city sewer, that complicates life because then you get tied up with the environmental authorities and right. you know, maybe, maybe, maybe lagoon. open lagoons yeah. and that's complicated. Yeah. yeah. But it's basically you're leasing a lot, a piece of land to someone and they either own the home or you own the home and you're getting rent for the home. But there's not a lot of turnover. Usually once they're there, they stay there. Yeah. And if they, um, if they own their home. If they own the home. If they own their home. Right. Yeah. But even if they don't, there's not a lot of turnover. And it's really good cash flow. The thing about that industry is right now, there's a lot of press about Warren Buffett getting involved in buying mobile home parks and sure. institutional money. They're going after the big, big parks, the top 15%. 85% are owned by mom and pops. 
Yeah. I'm just sick of running these things. So what we're looking for is mobile home parks where we can get a property manager in place. Right. Where we don't have to move there and live in a mobile home park and, <laughs> and collect. In Wichita, Kansas, where you don't know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that's basically the profile we're looking for. Okay. Yeah. It sounds similar to the dynamic going on in self-storage, which we've started to look at at my company and yeah. where I think in the self-storage space, it's like 72% of the properties in the U S are owned by mom and pops and institutional money is just now starting to come over the top. But like you were right. saying, they're looking at the 150, 200, 300, 400 plus thousand square feet properties that are sprawling all across the Midwest. And they're really not worried about the 20,000 square foot property or the 10 acre property here, you know, wherever, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's not enough juice for the squeeze as this, my PE friends say. No, right. but at that level, it's, it's good cash flow. And usually there's some simple things you can do to optimize the net income. Yeah. Such as? such as renting vacant space. You can sell mobile homes to people, yep. um, finance them. Yeah, you can, you, there's a lot of maintenance with when you yeah. own the homes. So if you can put up somebody in there who wants to do a lease to own, they're going to be a better tenant anyways and take more pride in ownership. Because they're caring for their home, not yours, right? Yeah, and that reduces your expenses when you do that because you don't have some maintenance. And then a lot of the mom and pops haven't thought about the concept of, you know, a rubs rider or charging back the utilities and things like some simple stuff that you can easily identify that you learn in the coaching program and that you can easily apply to other areas. For those folks in the audience who don't know what a rubs system or a rubs rider is, tell us more about that. Well, I think if they want to learn, they should go through the coaching program. <laughs> but but, but uh, we're just friends to... here. You can tell uh, me. <laughs> a rubs rider is basically you take a look at your utilities, you know, your electric, your your water, your sewer. Right. And instead of you absorbing that cost, you find a way to charge that back to the tenant. Yeah. Either they pay directly or you build them back on a monthly basis. So that basically is included as part of the rent. And thus takes that off your income statement, right? Yeah, and, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Right. And it enhances the profitability and absolutely and the, the cash on cash return. Grows NOI, which grows the value. Absolutely. Right. That's right. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Buying investment real estate is both thrilling and sometimes stressful. Without a lending expert by your side, most investors don't stand a chance. That's where CT Rea funding comes in. CT Rea Funding was founded by investors to help investors just like you fund their deals. Whether you're buying a single family rehab, an apartment building, or really any investment property, our team will understand your deal and help you close quickly. Go to ctreiafunding.com or call us at 860-876-0572. You and I met probably about a year ago, right? Maybe a little longer than that. Obviously, you folks have been very successful in your corporate careers as entrepreneurs, Kevin, you know, running your business and now together in your real estate business. I'm really fascinated by the folks that kind of take that plunge. At CT Rio, we have a lot of folks that come and go and they, and I was one of them for a while, you know, where I analyze properties for years and not do anything, right? And finally, With me, I got fed up with my career and dove head first in, but you know, a lot of those folks don't make that leap. And I'm curious from your perspective, what separates the folks who dream about doing what you guys do for a living from the ones that become you and actually dive in and begin investing in some asset class of real estate? I'll let Kevin talk, but I think the first thing is education. You have to go through some program that shows you the way. I mean, a few months back, I attended the Robin Thompson weekend And her message was, it's not hard to become a real estate millionaire. You just have to find the right recipe and then repeat it. Yep. And she's right about that. So somebody has to show you the right way. And then it's just a question of staying with it. And, you know, it's important to get your first success because once you get your first success story, then you get the confidence. And I... I remember our first tax deed auction. It was down in Jacksonville and we bid on this property and I was at work. And so Kevin was watching the auction. You can watch the live auction result. And he gets a, I get a call from him. He's a panic. 
we won. <laughs> Are you kidding me? You're going to be kidding me. It was, so it was our very first property and very first auction. We had probably 15 that we were bidding on in that auction too. And yep. It was amazing, yeah, that we we hit that one. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, we, we hit it, and it was a lot of taxes. I mean, these people were really well under the weather in trouble, and we were able to get that property at a very, very low price. It's tripled in value since then. Wow. This was like three or four years ago. Amazing. And, and the people who lived there became the tenants, and they have stayed there. We haven't raised their rent. They are the greatest tenants in the world. And that was the first, and once we had that success, it just changes everything. Mm -hmm. So you gotta, you gotta stick scary, with right? it. You gotta stick with it. And it's really a numbers game. You gotta be mentally prepared to look at a hundred before you get one Yep. in multifamily. I don't know how many contracts we've signed, purchase and sale contracts on multifamilies we have signed. And then for some reason, we just walked away because things didn't check out or the crazy people who signed the contract said, no, I, I, I don't want to give you any more information. Let's just close. They said, well, it doesn't work that way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're buying a business. No. You have to do well, due we, need to, yeah. we need to verify certain You're things. buying so. a business. Yeah, yeah right. So yeah. you, you got to be, you know, but the, there is a process. If you follow it, it works. Yep. Yep. And yeah, there's, I would say, yeah, education and preparing yourself and mentors help with that. You also have to take a lot of action and you don't realize how many numbers you actually need and you have to expect to fail and to handle it well. Just keep charging forward when you fail because that's how you learn and adapt and get better. I tell my team that, so I, I'm Irish, right? So I think about everything it, it, like you, I suspect. I fully expect mushroom clouds on the horizon and we plan for that. <laughs> and when they don't arrive, we're pleasantly surprised and we're a little more profitable at the end of the day, at the end of a project, right? Right, here you and, go. Yeah. I look at the properties that we buy here at Clark Street as it's a spreadsheet. I don't see bricks and nails and wood. I, I see numbers. It's binary. The numbers either work or they do not work. And right. there's no emotion. Right. That's it, right? And that's actually one of the ways I got over my fear of, you know, I'd find any pick a real little problem with a house. Oh, there's a cracked window. I, I don't want to buy that property. Right. Or, oh, it's a blue house. I wanted a white one. Right. You know, it's just yeah. stuff. But yeah, I hear you on you know, first off taking action and then also persevering because you're going to have difficulties, right? Every property has a curveball. Yeah, and, uh, that's right. You have to figure it out. I mean, you also have to listen to people. It's very important to be able to listen to people because if you don't, then you're not going to be successful. For instance, I get a lot of calls on our properties from these people who paid 80, 80 bucks for a course and then they call you up, is your house for sale? Well, no, it's not. Well, what price do you want for it? I mean, duh. Yeah. Like, Stop reading your script and actually it's talk. not for sale. <laughs> no. Right. And so I get those postcards and phone calls and emails all the time as well. And every property I own is for sale. You may not like the number, but if you give me a, right. a silly number, I'll at least pay attention. Right. Right. Yeah. And, uh, but hey, you never know. Guys, you've lived very different careers, and I'm curious, I'm going to ask each one of you separately, what's the best advice that you've got over the course of your career, and who gave it to you? The best advice that I've ever gotten is from Robert Kiyosaki, and basically he said, find a property that somebody else pays for, and that generates you a stream of income, and if you can do that, then you're going to be very successful. So that's the philosophy we follow. Excellent. Yeah. You never go wrong buying cash flowing properties or businesses. Absolutely. I think this is more recent. This is from Marco, actually, Marco Kozlowski. He said, time is your most precious asset you have. So and, true. Um, you don't realize that until you're, a lot of people get into business for themselves and they don't know where to focus their efforts. Yep. And you don't realize that until you're, you probably have to waste a few thousand hours of effort until you really understand where to focus your efforts, at least some people in order to get that journey. Because if you're wasting your time doing mundane things or non-profitable things, it's just going you know, to not do well as far as um, your business goes. So focusing your effort and time on the things that are going to make you profits is, is really what you need to do. And sometimes you just have to make mistakes to learn that. Yeah. And we you know, we're still making mistakes. We were out yesterday, we looked at four properties and two were basically falling down. <laughs> yeah. So, and you know, we just afterwards we said, why are we doing this? Why are we looking at this piece of junk mm -hmm. right. that people want top dollar for? 
Right. Yeah. yeah. So you really have to see if you can get, you have to create efficiency somehow. Absolutely. Yeah. And being stingy with your time is clearly one of those ways, right? right? The thing that used to get me, and I can't remember where I read it. I want to, I'll, oh, it's the ultimate sales machine, the Chet Holmes book. But one of the things that he used to talk about was uh, got a minute meetings, right? You know, got a minute walking through a hall or through your office or whatever, or a quick phone call or quick email that got a minute request can be two hours of your time that you're not doing the thing that you should be doing. And so I got really good at saying, no, I don't have a minute just for that reason. And it's, you know, it's amazing the amount of time you can save by just making small tweaks in your schedule. Yes. I would love to binge watch Yellowstone and it's a great TV show, but you know what? That 45 minutes that I'm going to spend on that, I'm going to go read a book. I'm going to go spend time with my family. I'm going to work on my business. I'm going to go for a run or something. You can always find time if you want to make it. Yeah, I don't know. It might be worth it to watch Yellowstone though. Oh, I've, I've watched it. I'm not, yeah. I, I, the reason I choose that is because I've already blown through season four and I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> Same here. Yeah. Oh, it's, I understand the point though. Definitely. Yep. In fact, I'm in search of my next series, which we'll see at some point, but you know, that's what I do late at night when my eyes are still wide open and I need to fall asleep. (laughs) Yeah. 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 So speaking of falling asleep, are you guys readers? Do you listen to audio books, podcasts? How do you get your knowledge? How do you get your information? All of the above. Recognizing that education is extremely important. We've invested a lot in education and training and mentorship. And we started with the CTV, a coaching program, and then have expanded. And I would call the expansion fine-tuning certain things. Yep. You get the basis. If you want to go through the coaching program and be successful, you can do that. But if you want to be really good at it and fine-tune it, then you you can read other books and stuff like that. So I've been through Lance Edwards programs and Marco's program. Robin Robin Thompson, Mm -hmm. you know, a number of different types of programs. And right now I bought two books on Amazon on dealing with pre-foreclosures because you're going to get more foreclosures now that the COVID sanctions are over. True statement. And that's an opportunity. And my daughter and Kevin's sister and her son-in-law have been dealing with foreclosures and they've been successful doing that. You know, they're young, they're in the thirties, but they don't want to stay in the rat race. So they're successfully, they've got five or six properties now. Excellent. It's on foreclosures and just, okay, it's a different area and you have to read up on it and you have to learn it. And every state is different. Right. There's books out there that, you know, you can basically obtain and for 25 bucks, you got two books. It's pretty valuable education. With Marco, he has a world of knowledge online. We train. Yeah. Hotels, multifamilies, mobile home parks, RV parks, and, you know, specialized training. So we've done all that stuff. And it's ongoing. And And it's always going. He's always recording Mm -hmm. something every week. Right. And, you know, I've I've been through, I just, I've always had a thirst for knowledge. I just can't help myself. I've been through the Bob Diamond program on tax deed overages and stuff like that. So and probably too much, but you can never know too much. Uh, you know, that's my philosophy. I couldn't agree more. Yeah, I try. I challenge myself every year to read at least a book a week. It doesn't necessarily have to be a technical book. It, it can be fun. I love Tom Clancy, but right now I'm actually reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad again. I try to read it once a year just to kind of focus me back in on stuff. Cause I find that even books that are in subjects that I think I know pretty well, you know, I live in the pre foreclosure world. Right. But nevertheless, with every book, there's always at least one gold nugget, right? There's something else that either I used to do and don't do anymore. And I'm like, Oh, I really should start doing that again. Or I'll learn something new. Right. I never thought of it that way, a different perspective. Mm-hmm. And it's fascinating to, to hear how other people think and how they solve problems. And almost right. always it's different than the way I would approach it. So. Right. The other area that's important, I think, is get a copy of the building codes and have a general understanding of them. Yeah. Because when you deal with inspectors, which we deal with a lot, every inspector is different and some of them just wing it and some don't. And when they wing it, you know, I play dumb and say, okay, I never heard of that. So can you guide me to what section of the building code? What page is that on? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, half the time they're just winging it. Right. Yeah. So yeah, they, really, they feel like it should be this way, but it's actually not. That's not the what. The, right, you know. and, and it's helpful to know that. So because you want to comply with the building code anyway, of course, and building permits and all that stuff. So that's an area you really have to learn. 
Indeed, indeed. So the two books that you have coming today, what are they? They're basically a guide to pre-foreclosures. Okay. And they're five stars on Amazon. Yeah. If you did pre-foreclosure, I can send them to you. Yeah. I'd love to read them if I haven't already read yeah, them. Yeah, no, I, I just yeah. I should be getting them today. All right. Well, Kevin, what about you? What, how do you get your information? And what are you reading? The last books I read was, I think it was Optimize My B&B. I forget who wrote it, but it was about Airbnb. We're finishing up a rehab now. We're going to put it on Airbnb in the next couple of months, get up to speed on that, and then really kind of learn their algorithms a little bit, you know, how their SEO system works so we can yep. get uh, ranking higher when we do launch. Yeah. And then uh, the other book I had was on mobile home parks. Some good stuff. I mean, stuff that we didn't know about, you know, we're learning about like heat tape. Wichita, Kansas, believe it or not, gets cold, freezing. Right. And heat tape. It plugs in and it keeps the pipes from freezing between the home and the water supply. So that's something that we needed to learn about. Smart meters, you can get killed with, on a mobile home park, your water bill can kill you. So having smart meters in place lets you know when a leak happens. So certain things like that I picked up in the book. Other than that, right now, I listen to Marco probably daily when I'm driving around or working out. And Robin Thompson too, just going through a lot of her content on the flipping side of things. Excellent. Excellent. There's a lot of free stuff out there too. A lot of stuff you know, on mobile home park investing. Some lawyer on the Midwest wrote a, a big book on it. Yeah. You know, how to buy a mobile home park. It's yeah. really good. So yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I follow I follow yeah. Ken McElroy on YouTube and you indeed. Robert Kiyosaki. He's yeah. he's very doom and gloom right now. And I guess it's warranted, but I listen to him too. Yeah, again, feeding into my expectation that the uh, mushroom clouds are about to appear on the horizon. He's certainly the one that's feeding at least a portion of that. uh, (laughs) uh, He keeps me up at night when he releases a a new episode on something. Yeah, I try to listen in the morning, so I'm not staring at the ceiling at 2 a.m. worried about the the world. (laughs) So, So guys, I'm really grateful for your time today and your knowledge. When you're not talking about mobile home parks or flipping or vacation rentals, what do you guys like to do outside of real estate? and Google and practicing law and being a CPA? (laughs) Well, I mean, my hobbies are taking care of the grandkids. That's a good hobby. Which is fun. I was looking for alternative income, started about 25 years ago and got into pretty out there, sophisticated option trading and and investing. So that's what I do in my part-time. Excellent. How about you, Kevin? I got a four-year-old and a two-and-a-half-year-old, so yeah. that's my life right now. Yeah, I we, understand. We just, started going, we just started going back to the gym again, so that's one. But yeah, just kids right now and family. Yeah, yeah my uncle always asks me, you know, don't you have any hobbies? And Because he and my aunt chose not to have kids. And uh, I say, yeah, they're, they're your nieces. That's that, Those are my hobbies. That's all I do. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Fish, yeah. I don't fish anymore. Don't play any organized sports anymore. I have a big snowboarder and skier. I haven't gone once this year, so. Yeah, yeah. No. Uh, when my wife, Patricia, first got pregnant with uh, our oldest, a friend of ours who already had kids, he said, go to every restaurant you want to go to, see every movie you want to see, because the next 18 years... There's very little of that going on that isn't related to Disney. 19 years in, that's 100% true. So so guys, thank you very much for your time today. How can people get in touch with you if they want to learn more or pick your brain? Or is it possible to get in touch with you on social media or somewhere else? Well, Kevin can cover how to get in touch with us. But there's one other point just very quickly. Yeah, of course. In terms of one of the barriers to this success in this area is finding funding. Yes. And it's more of a mental barrier, but my advice is find the right deal. And there's so much cash out there. There's so much money. There's such an extensive private lending network that are just thirsty for deals. If you find the right deal, you're going to get the money. So don't worry about that. Just find the right deal. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. And then Kevin can tell you how to get a hold of us. The uh, website is We Buy Houses Cash. Houses is with a Z in the middle, dot com. Excellent. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much for your time today. As always, it's a pleasure to see you and I wish you well. And hopefully we'll see you at the next CT Rea meeting. Thanks for having us. Sounds right. good. Thanks, Ed. Yeah, thank you very care. much. This has been the Real Estate Underground Podcast, a CT Rea presentation. Don't forget to rate, subscribe, and share this podcast with your friends. 
If there's a specific topic you want us to cover, post it in the comments. For more information on the Real Estate Underground Podcast or CT RIA, go to realestateundergroundpodcast.com or ctria.com. Until next time, happy investing. This has been the Real Estate Underground. Don't forget to subscribe. It helps us grow. Until next time, undergrounders, remember your real estate journey begins with a simple step forward. Now get to it. Bye for now.